duplex tour. We'll rock it through both sides with you. We'll start on this, the left side of the duplex. You know, it's the one with the pink doors. The layouts are exactly the same on both sides of the duplex, but the furnishings and the choices and the colors and the art are very different in each side. Um, floor planning wise, we made a lot of changes in here. Everything that you see, like the big windows and the height of the ceiling, that's original, but things like configuring and widening doorways, that's stuff that we took on. So, for example, this is a locked owner's closet. Yes, won't ever be in here, it will be locked. Um, it used to just be wasted space under the stairs. Over here, this used to be a closet and there was no bathroom downstairs, so we turned it into a powder room. It's small but mighty. I worried it wouldn't be very sweet because it doesn't have a window, but we did like a beautiful vanity with a stone top and a nice big mirror. It feels really airy and light filled. I think the big mirror really helps and the light finishes on the sink and the toilet. They're white. We didn't go with the pea green toilet. Um, this doorway originally was very small. It was like this wide. We widened it and then this house had been stripped of a lot of the character it used to have. It was built at least 100 years ago. So we like to add period details like this glass interior transom window. It wasn't here before. Widened it and added it. We just think it's such a nice touch. For the kitchen, which we completely redid, um, when we bought the house this was staged as a dining room. It really only had a fridge sitting in the middle of the room, but the kitchen was pushed over into this space, which used to be an outdoor, like a side porch area. We knew that wasn't originally where the kitchen would be because they wouldn't have put a kitchen in an open porch. And then they enclosed the porch and moved it in there. So this kitchen we had some fun with. We did blue cabinets, which we've never done before. We did open shelving, some really fun tile. We tried to keep it beachy and light, but still have like interesting original details. For example, Speaking of looks original but isn't because all the original charm was gone, we added these pocket doors right here. Look at them. We did it. Can you hear me? <laughs> we did it because we wanted to block some of the sound. So um, there's a washer and dryer in here. If people had their laundry going and were cooking or were eating or were watching TV, they might not want to hear it. But the reason we did them half glass is because we wanted the sun to be able to shine through these windows. We didn't want the kitchen to feel much darker if these were closed. And they feel so original. And one other tip is that we worried since it's a weekly rental that guests wouldn't know that they're there if they fully disappear into the wall. So we put some wood blocking behind them. They can't close all the way, which is great. People see them, they can easily grab the handle, they get that pop of pink, just really works well in a rental. Um, this is like a little pantry area, all the hooks in the world for hanging all the beach stuff and towels. And just, we know from having the beach house for a year that you don't want to hang all the things. There's even more hooks over here. There's a bench, and this is the back door. On this side, it's pink like the rest of the interior doors. On the other side, it's actually wood. So there's lots of fun deviations. The tile in here is completely different than on the other side. All the bathroom tile is different in each and every space. Um, so that's the downstairs layout. Thank you seen most of it. Oh, and you know what's really fun? We added personal touches to the area. So that's a picture of an adorable, cute little gas station. It's very historic. It's like over 100 years old. When you come into town, you'll see that. So we put a picture of that because we've always thought it was so cute. And it's actually what inspired our green shutters outside. And then we added a picture of this love sign. It's here in Cape Charles. It's kind of iconic to the area. So it's fun to put those like local touches. Um, speaking of non-local touches, this is our old railing from our porch in Richmond. Um, we were renovating our porch, didn't need it anymore, brought it here, thought it might fit. It fit perfectly. We didn't cut it down or anything. This is the original post and the original post, and it just went up and was great. So we have another detail like that upstairs, also from the porch railing. It's just the side rail that we brought with us, um, and all the hardwoods are original. So you'll see them as we work our way upstairs. Okay, coming up these stairs, you see this railing? It's like the brother to the railing downstairs. It is the original railing to our Richmond um, front porch. This one did have to get cut down a little bit, but we were super type A, we wanted this to stay in the middle, so we had them cut it down a little bit this way, a little bit that way, it is now perfect. Um, these are those original hardwood floors we talked about, and I'm gonna take you into the front bedroom. This has pretty much not changed very much from the original room. Except that we obviously updated things like the paneled walls. They had a drop ceiling that we took down. We just added a lot of new stuff. The crazy thing about the closet in here 
is that this room was pretty much the same, but there was this little closet right here that you see, and it had drywall over the window. So that beautiful diamond window that you see when we spin through, there's a dresser in there, a nice hanging bar. This window was covered in drywall. So it's really nice now to have it uncovered. The light spills in. Of course, we have the light blocking curtain for when people want to sleep, but it just makes that whole bedroom feel so much brighter now. So now we're back in the hallway, and if you walk out of the front bedroom, there's this hall bathroom. We did some really fun pattern tile on the floor in here. And then my tip to you is if you're doing a bold pattern somewhere, it's really easy to just do white everywhere else. You hardly ever regret it. We did white toilet, white sink, white shower curtain, white walls, a little bit of a brass and wood accent thing going on in there, but nothing too crazy because I wanted the floors to be the star. So right next to the hall bathroom is what we're calling the bonus sleeping nook. It is a very small room, perfect for sleeping to little ones or to adults who don't want to share a bed. It's just like a bonus sleep space. Light blocking blinds, sconces next to the bed that you can reach from the bed, comfy mattresses, and a pocket door. It doesn't have everything, but what it has is real cozy. We even did sound machines in all the bedrooms, so there's one in there. Um, this is a linen closet. It is really functional. Originally, the entry to the back bedroom was through this door. We realized if we moved the entrance over a little bit, we earned this entire linen closet, which is really helpful because we store things like a pack and play, a high chair, the sheets for the pack and play, extra linens, washcloths, even an iron, a hair dryer, and a first aid kit, and this ironing board. And the great news about this extra space is anyone in the sleeping nook who has a suitcase or extra clothing that they want to sort of shove in here and store, it's right off their bedroom and it's easy for them to access. So it makes that little room a little bit more functional too. So this is the back bedroom. This did not used to be a master because there was no bathroom up here. Um, there's only one hall bathroom. We bumped out the second floor just to match that long mudroom, laundry room that we showed you downstairs. There used to be nothing above it. We bumped it out so that we could get this bathroom back here and it was such a game changer to have an actual master suite. Again, we used some different fun tile in here, white um, vanity, white toilet, white walls, and even got creative, put a mirror over the sink. I had a mirror over the sink um, in a window like that in our second house. It was great for doing makeup, so I highly recommend it. Um, we also did these fun double closets. We want everyone to have a place to store things. There's a hanging bar. We even put a robe and a little um, suitcase holder in here. Um, lots of extra hangers and this little bench by the window. So we tried to make this room symmetrical and interesting and full of character because that didn't exist. It was just a rectangular space. So now we'll go back down to the stairs and then we've had the whole tour on this side. We're just going to pop over to the other side so I can show you what's going on over there. Okay, now we're on the other side of the duplex. This is the side that we affectionately call the green door side. You might have noticed the other side has pink doors. Even the stair risers on this side are green and on the other side they're pink. Um, same mirror reflected layout. So this is the owner's closet, this is the powder room. But almost every single decision we made to decorate is completely different. So like different rug, different poof, different coffee table. There's different art on the walls. This is a different table. It's a second hand table we refinished. On the other side, it's also a second hand table, but it's a different table. Different chairs, different light fixtures. Everything is different except for the neutral walls, the white curtains, and we did the same sofa on each side because we have it at home. We knew it could hold up to the task of being a rental sofa. Um, in this kitchen, lots of different choices, as is the theme. We have gold poles, we have this um, light wood colored cabinet. Actually, the same counters, but it looks totally different because almost everything else is different. Like, the backsplash is a different colorway. Um, I don't know. Oh, and we have a hidden dishwasher. This is the first time we tried this. It's really amazing because it's like completely blends in and then the pull-out trash cans over here. So um, we also did the pocket doors over here. They're in that green color with the glass, so it lets the light shine in. I really love trying to make it look like it has old character. Even when it wasn't here, we brought it back. Um, in the laundry room, mudroom, different tile on the floor. It was like really fun to make different choices throughout. So things like the tile and the door color made this a really fun project for us, even though it could have gotten overwhelming because it was 
six bedrooms and two kitchens and two laundry rooms. Um, the other thing that's different over here is this door was originally wood and we got to keep it wood. The other one was painted, so it got went pink, but we love this natural color. It actually ties into some of the other raw woods in here, like the wood table we refinished and the wood shelves. So um, that's pretty much the downstairs tour because you've seen it on the other side. And um, now we'll go upstairs and I'll show you stuff up there. Okay, now we're coming upstairs. Just totally naturally walking upstairs on camera. Um, same railing, we had two of each, so we just got to do the same thing on both sides, which was nice. Um, we're back in the front bedroom, which layout wise is exactly the same. It does have the green doors instead of the pink ones here. And there are lots of slight tweaks. We did different side tables. We did lamps over here on the other side. We did sconces and we even did a fun mobile over here just to add a little flavor. Um, in here is that same diamond windowed closet that used to be drywalled. So it's a really nice update over there. Um, this is the hall bathroom. Completely different floor tile. This was really fun when it's like pink and green, which feels very beachy and a lot like the colors we're using in the home. We did white everywhere else. Again, that's my tip. So the white subway tile, the white vanity, the white toilet, and then some wood and some brass just to add some interest. And also you can't see them, but there's tons of hooks right here. Hooks are everything. <laughs> this is that bonus sleeping nook again. On this side, it's a little green door. We do have a fan in here as well as the sound machine and the bed sconces. We know it's small. We wanted to make it really cozy and really like a special space, even with a wall mural, so that you're like, yeah, I got the small room, but it's really cute. And then same thing again. This is the linen closet storage, and this is the master, which, again, did not have a bathroom attached before, so we added that. It changed the game. In here we have wall sconces, which is a little bit different than the other side. These little side tables are different. And I don't think I pointed it out last time, but on each side there's this exposed brick chimney. We brought out the brick and just really think it's beautiful. It's downstairs in the kitchen as well. That was hiding behind the drywall. Um, over here, speaking of original details, these are original doors. They were the doors to a closet downstairs that we turned into a powder room. And I knew I wanted to use them, but they're not standard height. You can see I'm 5'2". They're probably like 6 feet 5 inches. This is a standard height doorway, so you can tell it's a big difference. So I knew I couldn't use them to enter like a bedroom or a bathroom because people would smash their heads who are taller than me. But a closet is perfect for them, so we created these two mirror image closets because anyone can stand outside and reach in. It's completely comfortable for a six foot tall John without having an issue. And um, it just was a nice way to keep these old doors around. They have such beautiful hardware and that cool old finish. Again, we did this bench in the window. And since the doors were not maximum height or average height, like this door is much taller, we did these little cubbies. That is a design tip because it probably would have looked weird to put drywall up there and just had a short door, like a hobbit door. And you're like, why is it so short? But if you build in cubbies, your eye almost doesn't even notice they're short because there's another detail and it just looks like great carpentry, everything's built in. You don't think too much about the height of the doors. So um, over here we have the master bathroom again. And it's the exact same layout as the other side, but again, we did different tile. We had so much fun choosing this stuff. I love this. It might be one of my favorites. It looks marble, but it's super low care porcelain tile. So you don't have to worry about staining. It's durable. I think it's even commercially used. So try to make those smart functional choices. But anyway, so you've seen the entire duplex top to bottom. And I hope you enjoyed it. It was really fun to give you a tour. And most of our rollers were so excited. I can't even speak. We're so excited to be done.